we're going to talk in this episode about how we'll, we can actually find Apple's registered live trademarks and strategies for how we can be organized about it and how we think about it and how we can share that information so that we can use it strategically in our business. When you're doing business, you're going to want to look up to see what your competitors are doing. You're going to want to see what sort of brands they're seeking protection on or what brands they already have protected. You can get a sense of where their business is heading, where their priorities lie, what they're investing resources on trying to protect from a, from a brand perspective. This is really, really key knowledge, especially if you're competing in the same marketplace as they are. So the question is, how do you, how do I find my competitors? competitors marks. Well, let's start, let's give you guys an actual example. Let's run through how you would actually go about doing this. And here is what, basically what we're going to do is, is we're going to pick, we're going to focus on live marks. And um, again, the key here is to focus on not combined word marks, but just do the owner name and address. And then what I recommend doing is typing in the company. And then you can also type in the city. This, I just want to say the city isn't exactly necessary. Let's take it out. Let's do the search about the city just for now. And here we're going to see all the various marks owned by Apple. It's quite fascinating, guys. Uh, we talked about 1A marks in prior episodes. So this means they're actually using this mark in commerce. If you're interested and you want to see exactly how the mark is being used, all you have to do is go click on TSDR here and then go down to goods and services. And you can see this is how they, they're actually, so this is wearable devices. So this is the actual class of goods that they're, that's being used to, to sell uh, under that brand. And then if you want to see an actual example, all you need to do is look for a specimen. So here you see on July 15th, they submitted a specimen. You can see, so if you click on, uh, I'm going to backtrack, uh, but basically if you click on specimen in the TSDR view, uh, then you can take you to here. So this, you can see how they're actually using this mark digital crown. So this is related to their wearable device. I don't know how much you guys know about Apple, but they have an Apple watch and this is how they, this is one of the, the, the unique brands that they use and they associate with that actual product. What you'll notice is they actually have 1,476 records. So there's a lot of records here. Um, but again, these are all live marks. Some you're going to see are were filed under 1B, which means they intend to, intend to use the mark. But again, it's cool because you can see exactly how they're using the mark. So this is for their new display, their, their display, their pro display. You can see the computer monitors under class nine. And the list just goes on and on because this is a behemoth, right? Most companies aren't going to have this many marks. But frankly, it's cool that you're able to actually see through all this and take a look at all the various marks that exist for a company of this size and magnitude. Now, one cool thing that you can do is you can actually just copy and paste all this information and just keep it as a list in a Google sheet that you can then build off of and grow on. And you guys can comment and just, it's just nice to have these, um, this is a resource, especially when you're looking at what sort of marks your competitors are seeking and what they intend to actually uh, uh, sell goods under, right? Because some of these are probably going to be 1B filings, which means that they're intending to use the mark in commerce, but haven't yet started. So this is a cool way of finding those. Now, a real quick tip. If you see this here, reg number, this means that it's actually already registered, okay? Now, if it's blank, okay, that means that it hasn't yet been registered, but it's pending. So for example, Apple News Plus, this is pending. It's filed under 1B, um, hasn't yet been, uh, oh, but it's been in registered internationally, um, but it still do, does not yet have a US registration number. And if you want to see the history about this particular case, again, you just click on the TSDR link and you'll go right to it and you'll be able to see all kinds of information about this particular case. And you'll see actually it's already been allowed. So once they submit a specimen, a statement of use, they'll actually have a registered mark. And the last thing that I'll mention that I haven't said before, you can also see what marks they've abandoned. So if you want to see the marks that were abandoned, when you get to this screen, rather than clicking on 
uh, let me go back here. I'll show you real quick, real quick. You can actually find dead marks. So these are marks that they no longer are actually pursuing. And you can see there's actually quite a few. So again, this is a really, really great tool. You can see the direction the company is going with the brand. You can see the direction they went before, but maybe changed course. And you can see what they presently have protected. Really, really great tool. You should use tests all the time to see what your competitors are doing. It will only help you and give you a competitive advantage in the marketplace if you understand what brands they deem worthy of protecting and pursuing with federal trademark registration. So great tool, use tests, use it to study up on your competitors. And like I said, it's a might be a good idea to create a Google Sheet or some other shared resource. If you really care about that particular competitor, you can use this as a tool in order to keep track of it and to use it when you're developing your own internal business strategy.